everybody. Welcome to another episode. I'm Mike Monticello. I'm Jake Fisher. And I'm Keith Barry. So obviously there are a lot of hot topics in the world today, and many of them are auto-related, whether it's global supply chain issues that are affecting you know, the availability of new cars or high gas prices. But we're going to touch on a different, also hot topic of late in the auto world, and that's electric vehicles. In fact, we're going to devote the entire segment, this entire show, to all answering all of your questions that you have sent in to us about EVs. And on that note, don't forget the best place to reach us to send us questions, comments, 30 second video clips. We love the video clips. That's talking cards at iCloud.com. So, speaking of video questions, we're going to start off the show with one from Adam in San Diego. Adam, start us off. Uh, standing next to my Ford Mustang Mach E, which I absolutely love, and my parents are the topic of my question. They have just ordered a Cadillac Lyric. It will be their first EV ever, and I'm trying to figure out how to get them educated on EVs, basically EV 101, things they should know, consider, charging, all that sort of stuff. And there's a lot of stuff out there. I'm trying to filter it down. I was wondering if you all have any advice, any resources, where I can send them to learn all about everything they should know so that I don't have to do it. Thanks. Well, Adam, first of all, uh, congrats on your Mustang Mach-E. The thing looks fantastic behind you. Hope you uh, enjoy driving that a lot. We certainly have enjoyed driving our test model. Um, but you're in luck. We have a great resource for you. We have a story up on consumerports.org, oh, consumerports.org, easy for me to say. And that's called Electric Cars 101, the answers to all of your EV questions. So please point your parents to that story. And I think uh, just about everything they're curious about with EVs is going to be answered right there. So let's now move on to Victor. Victor says, if you were advising someone who has their eye on an EV today, would you suggest that they lease or buy? Keith, do you have an answer? Yeah, I mean this. This is this is a question. The answer to which changes, uh, you know, by the month sometimes, and also is is different depending upon the car. I'm personally uh, not as opposed to leasing as a, as a lot of folks out there. Uh, the nice thing about leasing an EV, well, there are two things that are nice about leasing an EV. The first one is that um, any sort of tax incentives tend to get folded in, so your um, it lowers your monthly. Uh, monthly payment as opposed to having to wait to do your taxes or, uh, <clears throat> it, you know, paying up front for it. The other nice thing is that as EV technology is changing, I mean, just think about where cars were, uh, where EVs were three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, and the average person keeps their car now, uh, you know, 10, 11, 12 years. So 12 years ago, we had, you know, we had the Nissan Leaf and we had a really expensive Tesla. Right. Uh, so it, now there's so much other stuff out there. A lease, a, you know, three year lease in three years, you turn that car in and you, you turn around and you pick up something that's probably moved leaps and bounds ahead of it. The only issue with that is that those lease deals that you used to be able to get, I remember, you know, people were talking about being able to get BMW i3s for like 99 bucks a month uh, for a lease. Those have, have sort of gone away because EVs are getting more popular and they are getting better. And, you know, the, the car companies don't have to put that money on the hood to force people to buy them so they can sell them. Now, you know, the, the demand is there. So you're not going to find those deals uh, that you used to. But it, it, it does depend on the car. And Jake, you and I were talking about this, too. Um you know, if you're dipping your toe in the water for an EV and you're not sure if you want to buy it, uh, that can that can that can really be an issue with a lease. Well, well you, you know, I mean, first of all, you're you're totally right. It depends on the car, right? I mean, it's it's kind of the game of incentives. You know, some car companies are willing to push the leases or or, or not. So so it really does change. But but yeah, I think the tipping your toe in the water is is an issue. I mean, traditionally, kind of the hesitation about leasing is kind of signing that contract and like. Here's what's going on. You know, you, you don't quite have that freedom of buying. Maybe I want to keep it longer. Maybe I want to drive longer. And I think that's one of the pieces too, you know, so because of the lease and you're kind of a little bit bound, suddenly you go and say you accept a different job or say you're working from home and then all of a sudden they change that. And now suddenly I can't work from home. So now I have to drive a lot more. 
um, maybe this car really isn't going to suit me quite as well. And you're a little bit more bound. So that's just something else to consider. Yeah. Once you sign that contract, the only generally the only way to get out of that lease is buying it out. And that 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 buyout figure can be pretty high sometimes uh, because, you know, most folks didn't think about that buyout figure until very recently when people started buying out their leases and making money off of it. But the automakers have, have figured that out and those buyout numbers are are high. So you might not be able to easily buy out a, um, a, a lease and get out of it. You might be stuck with it for for the rest of uh, for the rest of the lease term. So, yeah, uh, just, you know, it's car to car incentive to incentive. Yeah, well, definitely, definitely an interesting question. Let's move on to the next one. This comes from Scott from Arnold, Maryland. Scott says, we all know that new cars with internal combustion engines have a braking period. Is there any type of equivalent for electric vehicles? So here's the deal. Uh, There isn't a break-in for an electric motor or electric motors. There isn't a break-in period for EVs from that perspective. But we would still suggest that what you want to do is that first 500 miles or so when it's brand new, you know, drive a little easy uh, to uh, kind of bed in the brakes properly, as well as kind of um, wear in the tires uh, without driving too aggressively. So that's that's what we would say there. So, so, so there's no break in period, but there's a break in period. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a, there's a be kind to your vehicle period, Jake, is what we call it. You wouldn't Isn't understand always... anything about that. But I, I will say it is interesting, you know, because. I, I wasn't 100% sure if that was true or not. And so I looked in our Kia EV6, you know, which is an EV that we just got for our test program. I looked, I combed all through the owner's manual. There's nothing in there anywhere about any kind of a break-in period, any kind of how to drive it whatsoever, other than just the basic way, you know, an EV functions. So it, it's a very interesting question. And so that's, I guess that's just one more thing that is in some ways, easier about EVs than internal combustion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, traditionally, people, I think they think about braking periods of the engine, right? And, you know, you bring in a brand new car and you floor it and and that's not so great, you know, for it. But yeah, it's something you don't have to worry about. But but you're exactly right. I mean, you're still, you know, the brakes and the tires, all that stuff do get broken in. But it's just, you know, you're not going to screw up the car that bad. <laughs> I think that's right. really... Uh, the other thing, too, is that you can... You can you don't want to floor an EV when you first get into it because a lot of these cars are so much more powerful <laughs> off the line <laughs> than what you're expecting. There's other problems. You, you see these videos on, you know, of someone getting into the Porsche Taycan for the first time and they're, you know, they're in their neighbor's yard. So, so it's another reason to kind of be, be gentle with it because you might not know your own I, strength yet. I kind of would want to floor it as soon as I got it. You know, I mean, it's kind of the appeal of some of these vehicles, but, J- but yes, yeah, there's ease into it. Jake wants You'd, to be shocked as soon as he gets into it. You jump into the pool and I'm the guy who's like, you know, lowering myself in because it's too cold. Um, let's move nice. on to the next one before our our producer Dave comes on and tells us to start the show over. Uh, Rick says, what EVs would you expect to remain structurally sound enough to justify replacement of their batteries? In Pennsylvania, the road salt capital of the world. Uh, I wonder if any of these steel bodied vehicles will have a body left when battery replacement time arrives. My experience with General Motors, Ford and Toyota says it's unlikely. Uh, Keith, so what's, how do, how do EVs, do EVs differ, I guess, from regular cars in terms of, you know, you, do you replace your engine or do you not? Yeah, I, I, I mean, the way I look at it is that a big vehicle expense is a big vehicle expense. And again, it's it's another one of these things that it's it's there are so many different types of EVs out there. We can't just think of them as as a monolith. Uh, you know, EVs are cars. Uh, and they just happen to have a different propulsion system. So just the same way that you might have a two hundred thousand mile, you know. Uh, Nissan Altima that's that's 20 years old and the transmission goes and it's and it started to rust and you think you know what it's not worth it spending the three grand to fix this car but if you have a newer car that's in better shape and um, fewer miles it might be worth it to spend more money on it so I, I think it, it really really depends also the cost of these battery replacements the cost of these big repairs unlike with you know gas engine cars, Sometimes because this is developing technology, the prices actually come down over time. Uh, so you might find that something which is an expensive replacement now in a few years, the cost of batteries might be down and it actually might be a less expensive repair. But it, it yeah. really it really depends. And also cars don't really rust that much these days. I mean, we're in New England and 
I remember going through some of the old, you know, you're reading through some of the old CRs from the 60s and 70s. Sometimes the cars would rust before they'd be out of our test program. But that's just not happening anymore, right, Jake? Yeah, I mean, the rust belt uh, thing has kind of changed a lot. I mean, the modern cars, I mean, they aren't really rusting very, very quickly. Um, that's that's right. I mean, everything is, is, is different now. But um, but I think you're, you're right. I mean, I think one way to think about kind of that battery replacement, which is daunting and scary. But I mean, you also got to think about all the other things that aren't getting replaced. Transmission, engine, fuel system, um, all of these other things that can add up for sure. I mean, if you have to replace an engine and a transmission over a couple of years, that could get crazy expensive. So um, it's really kind of the same calculus, right? You know, how long, much longer do you want to keep this car? Um, same questions that we've always been asking. Okay, let's move on to the next one. This is uh, Ronald from Germantown, Maryland. Ronald says, a recent snowstorm and traffic jam in Northern Virginia got me to thinking, what would have happened if many of those were all electric? How many uh, or how would the EVs have performed? How long would the batteries last to keep the occupants warm? Uh, Jake, let's go to go to you on this. What's the answer here? So, so the answer is they'd last a pretty long time. Um, we actually ran a few tests ourselves. We took some of our electric cars and we put them out in you know freezing weather and ran the heat. Um, and what we found was, you know, it certainly does run the battery. Um, we we saw around, it was about 2% loss of the battery for every hour about. Um, so you think about, you know, maybe three to four miles, depending on what your your vehicle is. So they'll last a long time. And they're probably a lot more efficient than if you were actually running a gasoline-powered car, which burns. Um, I mean, we were even just looking at some small cars, and you were, looking, you know, burning a quarter of a gallon um, every hour. So that does add up in terms of miles. Um, so it's not about how long it lasts. I think the issue is, and, and first of all, it's kind of a freak thing that, you know, these cars you hear about, you know, sitting there for 24 hours or something that sometimes you got bigger issues, you know, I mean, where to go to the bathroom and oh, get food. Oh, I got some like big that. issues. <laughs> but I mean, the, the bigger issue there is, you know, if it really goes down, um, you know, how do you move the car if you, your battery completely dies? I mean, obviously, it's not the gas can that goes around and gets you going um, far. You're going to certainly have to be flat bedding these vehicles off. But um, not something you really, I mean, it's kind of like the, the shark attacks, you know, it's like, ah, uh, you know, uh, I heard about, you know, three sharks that, you know, attacked last year. And, you know, meanwhile, you know, 40,000 people die in car fatalities. It, it's it's not probably something you super really have to worry about. But isn't it interesting uh, thing just to see, you know, as as the industry changes, how how the vehicles operate differently. So keep better, a blanket in there. Huh. <laughs> keep just keep yeah. a blanket in there. Well, it's it's true. You're you're mm -hmm. right. I mean, you don't have to keep the car on the entire time. And and the truth is, even if you shut down the car, as long as the windows are closed, it's going to stay warm for a while. So it's not like you have to keep the car blasting heat for uh, for the whole time if that Man. freak occurrence happened. Spoken like a couple of truly tough New Englanders. I love it. <laughs> just, just, start just a put fire. a blanket on. You'll be fine. Kindling. <laughs> no, seriously, though, it, it, I'm, you, you, I, I'm not trying to. You, you should have one in your car if you're traveling in the. And also, I, I think the, the food is actually, you know, keep a snack back there too. keep a couple of granola bars or something, because you're going to you're going you're gonna to run out of juice before the car does, most likely. Don't burn the wood paneling on the dashboard because it's not really wood. It's plastic. It smells terrible. So that's I've another been good misled. tip. I thought it was real wood. <laughs> All right. Um, Matt from Las Vegas uh, has the next question. He says, you often mention how cold weather decreases electric vehicle range. I've never heard you discuss very hot weather, as in the desert southwest, three to four months of temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Nearly continuous air conditioning must create additional battery load. I also wonder whether battery efficiency, battery efficiency changes. What's the story on electric vehicles and hot climates? Jake, we're going to throw this to you. My understanding is back when you worked for uh, an auto manufacturer, they called you Mr. AC. Is, is that true? You just made that up. Oh. You completely just made that up. But fake news. Sure, we'll, right we'll go here. with that. <laughs> well, 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 All we'll, right, we'll Mr. AC, what, what's the answer here with hot weather and EVs? So AC, yeah, air conditioning, right? I mean, it's, it's this whole... It, it, it was crazy. You know, I, when, when I when I took my engineering degree, right, I mean, I learned all about applications of thermodynamics. And I'm like, what am I going to use this in real life? And my first job was like using psychometric charts and like thermodynamics, which is crazy. But but here, here's the thing. Air conditioning systems are just much more efficient 
than heating systems, um, just the way they work. So it's not using as much energy to do that as traditional heating systems, which are really just like old school heating elements for the most part. Um, that really burns a lot of uh, burns a lot of juice. Now, some of the newer EVs have heat pumps and a heat pump. Think about it as an air conditioning system that works the other way. So it basically is a more efficient system. So it does not uh, burn as much juice when it comes to your electric car, but still it really does. Um, it, it, it's worse than the air conditioning. So the air conditioning is going to be more efficient than, than, than your heat. It just, it just, that's the way it works. And the batteries really don't like the cold. So, um, so the thing is, and, and that's why, you know, I mean, you look at, you know, where the electric vehicles have become popular first, you know, it's hot climates. That's where real, they really uh, do, you know, they aren't hurt as much. We've done some experiments, uh, you know, even in terms of the cold weather, um, driving around EVs. And, you know, we wrote an article and we said basically double down on range because you could really cut your range in half if you're really driving around on cold weather. You know, Jake, I know you didn't love the Mr. AC uh, nickname I gave you, but it's a good thing you didn't work on the heating systems. because Otherwise, we, I would have called you Mr. Hot Air. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so, on so fire today. You're, you're a regular, uh, you're Rich Little, and now you're Don Rickles. <laughs> <laughs> We're know. trying to connect with the younger viewers by making relevant references here. So I think I'm offended, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna go Will Smith on you really soon. I'm oh, walking no. over. <laughs> um anyway, okay. Let's see. Uh let's move on to Dan from Wyant's Kill, New York. Uh on a recent episode, you answered a question about what happens when the EV runs out of juice. Your answer was you have to get it towed to a charging station. But what happens the moment an EV runs out of electricity? Does it just stop in the middle of the road? Is there enough juice left to run the hazard lights? Can you switch it into neutral so it can be pushed off the road? Keith, uh, what's the answer here? These are legitimate questions. Yeah, entirely, entirely. Um, I, I, the good news is that uh, it gives you so many warnings that you absolutely have to willfully ignore them uh, in order. And, and I have so much regular anxiety that I don't have room for range anxiety. So I charge every time I have the opportunity when I'm driving an EV. But when you do get down to that, you know, five miles, six, you know, it it tells you. It really, really tells you. It starts, it's, it's dinging at you. Everything on the screen is there. And it differs from car to car. But generally speaking... Um, you have enough power that you can pull off to the side of the road. It, it, there's a chance that it might even kind of go into like a limp mode where the car really can't drive that fast anyway. So you'd have to pull over before it sort of forces you to pull over. It's not like you're going to be going highway speeds and all of a sudden the car just goes, you know, it was, was that a good impression? That was fantastic. So, okay. Yeah. So awesome. it's, it's, it's not like that happens, you know, it's going to be, Dinging screens, you're you're going to have to pull over to the side of the road anyways. You're going to have enough power that you're going to be able to roll the car at least somewhere. We we did some uh, like range testing, you know, when these these really came out. We've done a lot of that, and we've gone down to basically zero. And um, it's exactly right. And, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, I keep on thinking about that Seinfeld episode with Kramer. We just kept on it's like, oh, it doesn't really mean zero. You know, it keeps on going with the fuel light on. I mean, w if anyone has had this experience with an actual gasoline car, it's kind of it sputters and you're kind of, you know, in trouble. Um, there's whereas the 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 electric cars are a different animal. Um, they go into limp modes and they're just like, I mean, they're kind of like you're struggling on. So it's so not even just like a warning. It's like they're smacking you over the head. You're like, OK, you're just going to drive really slow right now until you get somewhere where you can charge. But see, uh, so it's very obvious. That's boring because the whole thing about the Seinfeld <laughs> episode was that they were trying to see how far they could go beyond the end of the the E marker there. Right. And so I, I don't I don't that's just not as interesting, you know. But isn't it, it adds to the, the drama when you've got all these, these warning lights coming and beep, beep, beep well, and all that. It just, it makes it feel more like a thriller than a comedy, you know? So, you know, it's interesting because I was, I've been wondering the same thing actually about, you know, what, what does happen and, and uh, you know, what do you do? And, and I talked to AAA about this and they said that, you know, when like back in 2010, they started doing some some uh, work with, you know, mobile 
uh, chargers. You know, they could go out and, and charge an EV if need be. And AAA batteries, they just drop them off there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, and they said that, first of all, only like 2% of their calls are for people who run out of gas. So it's good that we're not as dumb as a human population as you might think. Um, and so. then, but they, they said that, you know, they do get EV calls every once in a while, but because of exactly what you were saying, Keith, it's, it's about 2% of the people who have EVs, you know, that have call with a problem, it's related to them having run out of juice. But because EVs right now are about a half a percent of the amount of cars on the road, it amounts to hard, uh, like a, just a tiny fragment of calls huh. that they ever get. So they do have an ability to come give you a charge if if that happens. But uh, Greg Brandon from AAA said it, it basically, it, I mean, it's so incredibly rare. And the reason why is because unlike a, a gas car that doesn't really give you a whole bunch of warning. It gives you some, modern cars give you some warnings, but not to the extent of an EV, nor does it cut your power or anything like that. So it's, it's going to be, you, you'd have to, you'd almost have to, wouldn't you say, Jake, try to run out of juice with an EV? Yeah, you got to be a little intentional about it. Um, I mean, I suppose the, the fear is that, oh, that place I wanted to charge on the way is out of commission. That's, always That's what he said happens. About that, it. that was the yeah. one thing he said happens is you have a plan, you have your EV plan, and and you said, OK, I'm going to I'm running low. I'm going to yeah, I found a charging station. I'm going to head to the charging station. You get there. And guess what? You know, it's not it's not in use or, or I mean, it's not There's in a big service. semi trailer parked across yeah. all of Could them. Be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For whatever reason, you can't yeah. use the charger. And, and that's when when they you do have problems. But anyway, it's uh, it's definitely a good question, though. Well, that's going to do it for this all EV questions all the time episode. Uh, if you want to we, learn we've run out of juice. We've run out of juice. I need I need a quick recharge. Uh, if you want to learn more about the topics we talked about, you can click on the links in the show notes. Don't forget to send those questions, comments, 30-second video clips at TalkingCars at iCloud.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next week. <laughs>